I think everybody uh, coming to Singapore will know what VAT stands for. It's video assisted thoracic surgery or keyhole surgery in the chest. And to be honest, this is nothing new. We've been doing this since the 1990s, uh, since before some of the attendees were even born. So it's not new surgery. It's now the gold standard. And as we know, with keyhole surgery in the chest, we're reducing surgical morbidity. We're increasing uh, uh, patient quality of life after surgery. And there are many uh, side benefits as well. For example, reducing the time to uh, receiving adjuvant therapy after surgery. However, as we move forwards, what we're seeing over the last 20 years with VATS is that um, we're, we're as surgeons, we're looking at how to improve things. So we're, we're making the surgery even uh, less traumatic. For example, by performing uniportal vats, we can now do keyhole surgery through just one keyhole, but that's small, instead of a few keyholes. Uh, once we go into the chest, we can now uh, perform a less invasive surgery inside the chest in that we don't need to take out an entire anatomical lobe of the lung. We can take out uh, specific segments to reduce the uh, harm to the patient's lung function after surgery. We're doing things like that, and we're combining it with what we call ERAS, Enhanced Recovery recovery after surgery to uh, offer perioperative care to complement the surgery to ensure patients have the maximal benefit. However, that's very uh, well and good within a surgical uh, uh, conference if we're talking among surgeons. But in the wider world of lung cancer therapy, that's is still evolving and still evolving in the way that uh, surgeons um, uh, use it to offer cure to more patients. Because now that we know that VATS can reduce morbidity, the, the, the beauty of VATS is not in reducing uh, morbidity for the individual patients, but by reducing morbidity, we're also reducing thresholds for receiving surgery. So traditionally, patients who cannot receive surgery, for example, the very elderly, the very frail, those with a loss of medical comorbidities, nowadays, we are much less hesitant to offer surgery to them. So with a good grasp of a modern uh, minimally invasive surgery, VATS, uh, there are essentially no absolute contraindications for curative lung cancer surgery anymore. There may be individual um, uh, uh, relative contraindications, but certainly it's becoming increasingly difficult to turn away any patients purely based on uh, advanced age or a specific uh, uh, lung function parameter, for example. And as we move forwards in partnership with our physician and oncology colleagues, this VATS is already making its presence felt in MDTs in that more and more patients, we now realize that, well, we don't necessarily need to give up on them. We can go for forwards of surgery. And it's further complemented by, uh, I was talking about earlier, the new pharmacological advances. So we're having a new generation, neoadjuvant and adjuvant therapies. Now, VATS, minimally invasive thoracic surgery, has a great role to play here as well. For example, as I briefly mentioned earlier, we are now demonstrating that by performing surgery using a minimally invasive approach, we can reduce the interval between the surgery and postoperative adjuvant therapy. And that makes a difference because it's been shown that by reducing that interval, it's actually possible to improve survival with the combined therapy. Another interesting thing, for example, is immunotherapy. A lot of attention is now put on to neoadjuvant and adjuvant immunotherapy. And it's been uh, demonstrated that certain factors might improve the efficacy of this combined surgery with immunotherapy. For example, circulating tumor DNA after surgery. The less circulating tumor DNA you have after surgery, the better the survival outcomes with adjuvant immunotherapy, for example. And lo and behold, with VATS, with minimally invasive thoracic surgery, it's been demonstrated that yes, surgery might be able to reduce such circulating tumor DNA. 
thereby improving immunotherapy outcomes. And therefore, we're coming into an era where VATS is not, we're not only talking about VATS improving patients in terms of morbidity and pain, but improving overall oncological results when used with pharmacological uh, therapies in a neoadjuvant or adjuvant setting. So that's the role, it's still evolving. Although VATS is now very mature, surgeons today are still finding new ways of where VATS can have a new role to play in overall lung cancer management. 